I, um, I just want to ask you a question. Do you, do you have any friendships, or maybe it's in your marriage, or maybe it's a roommate, where there are conversations you're not allowed to have? It's like, you may not even know that you're not allowed to, like, maybe you don't even talk about the fact that you're not allowed to have that conversation, but you just know that's a no-fly zone. Like, if I fly my plane over that airspace, they will shoot it down. <laughs> they will come down. And Shauna and I, my wife, we had one of those areas, and it was church planting. That was the one we were not allowed to talk about, ever, ever. In fact, um, we, <laughs> I would joke about church planting sometimes. It's like, ah, oh, you know, when stuff would get tough at a church, i go, we could just plant, a, and she'd like, Sh-jip. she'd just say, stop it. That's not even funny. I wasn't even allowed. It's not even funny. Not even supposed to raise it. So six years ago, I was standing in a uh, church foyer in Dalhousie Community Church, and, <laughs> and I was, I was minding my own business, and we were hosting a convention, the annual uh, Alberta Mennonite Brethren Convention of conventioning people who convene to conven- <laughs> convocate the con- convents and conveningtions. And you can, I just love them, you can tell. Uh, <laughs> just love the business part of them especially. And so I, because we were hosting, I had to be in my best behavior. <laughs> and so what that meant is I couldn't let my bad attitude show. That's what that meant. And so I was walking around, Mr. Grumpy Pants, just kind of going, oh, this sucks, I gotta be my, on my best behavior, walking around on, on the, during the business meeting portion of this thing, and I ended up having a conversation with somebody in the foyer, and uh, this guy happened to be part of c to c the c to c network, which is a church planting network, and we weren't even talking church planting, <laughs> and, and I, I kid you not, I have to stand up to show you, because some of you don't see it, but I call it my clunk shift. That's what happened. So, so I was having a perfectly normal conversation with this guy, and I had an encounter with God right there on the spot. So, so something happened inside of me. It went literally, like I call it, went clunk, shift, like, like a gear shift, like something had shifted in my spirit. And it was so profound, it was almost physical. And, and it shook me, like, so badly that I actually, I actually quit the conversation. I just said, excuse me, I gotta, I gotta go. And I went to my office. And I, could, I felt like I was going to faint. The, it felt like the blood was draining out of my face because I realized in that moment that something had just changed in my life forever. Not that it was changing, not that I had a say in it. It had changed. It was done. And so I sat down in my office, clutched my desk, and I said, God, what the heck was that? Except I didn't say heck. And I, I was... <laughs> we're recording. So, uh, and, uh, and, and I was like trembling on my desk. And he said, you know exactly what that is. And I was like, ah, uh, so are we being released from Dalhousie Community Church? Yes. He says, I said, to plant church? Yes. And I was like, oh, crap. Because <laughs> now I got to go home and I got to talk to her. I got to talk to, I gotta talk to Shauna. And I might even allowed to joke about it now. So, oh, okay. So I go home and... Oh boy, how does this so that the, the convening con, con, convolicon, honey, the weirdest, and God, he, so I was praying, oh, ah, God has released us from Dallas Community Church, and we're supposed to plant a church, and without blinking an eye, she says, okay, and I'm like, what? <laughs> No, like I said, <laughs> you know, I don't know. I didn't say, let's go to Maui. I said, <laughs> we're supposed to leave. The, and she's like, no, we're, we're good. And, and from that moment on, we started taking steps of faith to, to resign from Dalhousie Community Church and to start what would become manifest. It doesn't look like much this morning, but <laughs> uh, we're going to talk a little bit about this journey that we've been on. And I, my goal here is to, to invigorate you with vision. And whether this is your home church or not, because I know we've got some visitors, I hope it will be, but I want you to hear the story. So, um, and I want you to get as much out of it as possible. So can you just humor me for a second? Can you just, wherever you're sitting, can you put your hands out like this in a posture of receiving from God and uh, just say, uh, God, I want what you have for me. Would you speak to me? Would you show me what I need to see? And help me to respond the way you want me to respond. All right. 
okay, you're in trouble now. So <laughs> um, from, that, from that moment on, uh, God was just doing miracle after miracle after miracle in our lives, and then, and then this collection of people that eventually became our core group, many of which are actually sitting here today and are still part of, of Manifest, core people, because not because they're, they've got some inside track, but because they've decided to wrap their lives around what God is doing, to give themselves to the mission of Jesus as it's expressed here. So uh, I'm, I, we would not be here without those people. Um, I happen to be the one who's talking, but um, they could talk for hours as well about what God's done in, and through them. It's been, it's been incredible. Um, things like I was sharing at a conference about Manifest, and I just shared about five minutes or something, and after the conference, the pastor came up to me uh, with one of the elders and said, we want to give you $10,000 to help you start this church. No, no strings attached. And we were like, let me, let's pray about it. You know, it's like, yes, thank you. So stuff like that just, just doesn't happen. Um, was happening like all the time. Things, things that you would hardly dream of. Like the past, the, the, the principal of this school actually asked me if we wanted to meet here. Instead of me having to go through the rigmarole of trying to convince her that this was a good idea. And then I said, well, yeah, but we're in our living room. Because that's where we were. We started as a small group in our living room. 17 of us, five Huberts and 12 others. And, and so we were at this like early stages. And, and I said, oh, yes, but we can't, I, maybe eight months from now. And she said, fine, then I'll just say no to every application until then because I want you in here. And she's not even a believer in Jesus. Stuff like that was happening all the time. Um, I, I want to I wanna just share with you um, just some of the things that Jesus has done over, over the years. Um, <laughs> one of my favorite stories actually revolves around our trailer. So everything, we, everything you see here except chairs fits into a five by eight trailer that backs into our garage and the trailer's insulated. So in winter, we put a space heater in there, turn it on low just so it doesn't freeze and that's how we keep the stuff warm. Well, uh, at some point, somebody messed with the heater. I don't know who, I don't care because this is what happened. So, so I, we get home, I plug the heater in and set it and forget it till the next Sunday, right? And, and, <laughs> and so, so uh, midweek, uh, Noah and I are in the garage and he's working on some cosplay stuff, probably Batman. And, and so I go over to the trailer to get something out of the trailer and the metal on the outside of the trailer, remember it's insulated, is hot. Ah, so I open the door of this trailer and this just, this waft of like hot glue and metal comes out at me like this steam. It's like a, it's like a sauna opening up and I'm thinking, no. So Noah and I quickly are pulling stuff out of this trailer. And what happened is I guess the, the, the space heater, when you crank it, the thermostat is off. So it doesn't, it doesn't kick out, it's just, just on, just full on. So this is Thursday. So all week it's been just building up heat inside this thing. So we, we pull all the equipment out. These speakers, the subwoofers here, they were steaming in our garage this winter. So we're like cooling things off in the, in the cold, hoping it's not too damaged. We ended up losing the soundboard and uh, we had a digital snake up here, we lost that, um, and a bunch of other stuff, it was crazy. But while this stuff is steaming on the, on the driveway, one of our neighbors walks up, and he's like, hey, some pretty nice stuff. And I said, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it was, you know, kind of thing. And he says, what's it for? And I said, oh, it's, uh, I don't know if you've seen the signs, we're Manifest Church just down the road, we meet at the school, because we just live up the street, right? And he goes, oh yeah, I think, I, I think I've seen that. And he starts saying like, well, this is pretty nice equipment, what do you do? And I said, well, it's kind of like, think of like a church for people who don't like church. He's like, really? And he says, that'd be perfect for my family. We hate church, exact <laughs> words. And, um, and so uh, this guy, uh, two Sundays later or something, shows up in church with his uh, live-in partner and their kids, some of which are shared, some are not. It's kind of this messy situation. And uh, we give this call for people to accept Jesus and he stands up. And, and she stands up, and one of their kids stands up, and we're like, what? And, and, and this is like with glitchy equipment, because we haven't figured out what's all broken yet, right? Like, it's like it, some things went like a week later, two weeks later, a month later, because the glue had literally melted off the soldering. Con like, it was just brutal. So, so and as, it, as it ended up, 
they're, 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 how many kids they have? 700 or something. They have um, they, those two and three of their kids ended up coming to Christ because the trailer melted down, right? And that only Jesus could do that, right? Have this, orchestrate this conversation. And uh, a lot of the people that I'm going to talk about today, many of them actually, like you know how Calgary works, that have moved away different places and uh, some of them we just lost contact with, but Jesus did his work. And so we need to, we need to celebrate that. Um, I remember one morning, um, we, I can't remember even what I was speaking on, but a, a, la- a young lady came in for the very first time. She'd never been to Manifest, and she looked very distraught. And so I had Carla, where's Carla sitting? Is she in here today? There we go. I had Carla kind of link up with her, and I think she probably just did it without asking, actually. And just because we like to make sure that people that come in don't, you know, aren't, they, they're not alone, right? And so... Carla ends up sitting with her, and this girl's asking questions throughout the message, and so much so that Carla thinks, well, let's just like move back a few rows, and so they take chairs, and they go sit right back over there where we have the chairs now for the prayer stuff, and they start talking, and she's asking questions like throughout the message, right, Car? And, and she, 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 there's, it comes to this moment where, again, I'm in asking, does anyone want to give their life to Jesus? And she gives her life to Jesus. I can't remember whether, whether Car prayed with her or whatever. After the message, she says, Carla says, can you come over? I want you to introduce you to this girl. And, and so I go back there, and this story unfolds. First of all, it's like June or something like that, and so she's got a tank top on, and I have never in my life seen so many cutting marks. So her entire upper arm was just like tracks like this, like from cutting. So she, mm, oh, there's a story there, right? And so she starts to tell this story of, of, of abusive relationships that she's been in where um, she, she got pregnant and her boyfriend found out so he just so he pounds her stomach until she loses the baby um, that kind of life this is the kind of life that she's got like unbelievable unbelievable pain and, and suffering and, and so um, she says last night she says I tried to kill myself so I, I, took, I took a bottle of pills and swallowed it and passed out and just was waiting to die. And I guess the story is that in the middle of her, <laughs> I don't know what you call it, this drug-induced death stupor, I, she has a vision. And in the vision, there's, there's light, and she has this vision of being born. And she wakes up in a start, throws up the contents of her stomach and survives and walks in here on a Sunday morning, the next morning. And here's about a guy that talks, here, here's me talk about this God that loves her so much that it doesn't matter what she's done or where she's been. <sighs> and so, so we're, we're talking to her and, and praying with, with her through stuff. Um, another story, um, probably gang where you're sitting right there in, in the very first few months of us meeting here, there's a, there's a lady sitting here, and while she's listening to me preach, she, she has an encounter with God. And so the way she described it to me was, she, she's sitting there, and she's watching me preach, and suddenly I start to glow, and then she realizes I'm not glowing, there's a figure in me that's bigger than me, that steps out of me, and she realizes it's Jesus. I kid you not, sitting right there. And, and so afterwards, I'm like, I think Jesus is trying to get your attention. <laughs> I think maybe. And, and led her in a prayer to receive Christ. Right there, right here. Stuff is happening. Right, 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 right kind of like where you've been sitting. Um, and a year and a half ago, something like that, um, his story, we've got it on the website, but Jez is sitting right over there. Jez walked in to, to manifest um, having just, uh, having a week from hell and um, was, had actually um, been considering killing himself, had driven to Elbow Falls to kill himself and, and God intervened. The sun literally broke out of the clouds at the, just the right time and, and he says, God, that's cheating. <laughs> like, right? That doesn't, it's not fair. And uh, except God loves him, right? And so uh, he knew us from before, so he walks into manifest and and here's a message about reconciling with God and reconciliation. And we sat right over there 
as, as Jez gave his life to Jesus and prayed that, that the Holy Spirit would come fill him. So we met, here's a really cool thing. He's, he's got a very colorful life. If you want to talk to him, he's got about the most interesting story in this room. I guarantee it. Uh, UK, he was a police officer. He played professional rugby. He did security for the royal family. No kidding. So he's got, he's got some stuff that he's gone through, been through. So a um, couple of weeks into following Jesus and praying through some stuff with him, he just said, kind of offhandedly says, oh, by the way, um, I've struggled with PTSD most of my life, and it's gone. <laughs> it's just gone. <laughs> so like, oh, and, and so, okay, gee, thank you, Jesus. Like, that was, that was cool. Um, <laughs> that was really neat. Um, we, 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 the, the stories literally could go on and on and on. Um, there's, a, there's a lady named Kim, and they've, they've since moved away, that uh, she, she came to Jesus on, a, on an Easter Sunday, stood up and gave her life to Christ, showed up at Life Group uh, the next week. And as we're kind of mingling and talking around, she starts, she's coming from a completely unchurched background. And, and so she starts talking all matter-of-factly about how, yeah, you know, in fall, I think this is Easter, right? So in fall, I, I went to see a medium. And um, you could just, the, the Christians in the room, you could just feel the stiffness, right? It's just like, <laughs> she did what, what? Are we going to be okay? And, and so, um, so she's like, yeah, it was the weirdest thing. She was very profound. She, she took my hand and she did this thing. And, and she tells me that, that this year, everything in my life is going to start to make sense, that's, that my spiritual search is going to be over. And, that, and so she says, Brad, while you were preaching on Sunday, I realized that what she was talking about was Jesus. And I'm like, yeah, that's what she's talking about, I'm sure. Um, and so... Uh, <laughs> And, and I, think he, I think she was. I think God used that in some ridiculously awesome way uh, to lead her along the path to Jesus. And so um, then I, I talked about getting baptized. And she's like, sure, let's do it. And she got baptized that summer, or I mean that, that uh, Sunday. Um, but, but one of the cool things I said was, um, so, so Kim, um, now Jesus is your medium. Like, so now you don't, you don't need to go to all these other sources to get your spiritual guidance and knowledge and Jesus actually is, is, comes, is like he steps between us and God and bridges the gap. And this is, this is Jesus now. So yeah, yeah, it's totally cool. So, so funny, right? Just how, how God has worked in these, in these amazing, amazing stories. There, there are other stories like Caroline came last Sunday. She was one of the first people to give her life to Christ. And it's just in, in, in manifest and just come alive in, in beautiful ways. She, she's moved away again, moved to the other side of Cochrane. They've started a business, so we don't see her very often. Um, but so fun. Um, I can't even put into words just all the different things that we've seen Jesus do. Uh, these are the big, like, you know, victory stories that kind of go over the top, but there are a thousand little ones, people, people getting healed right here, like knees and backs and, and things. There are people like where marriages and, 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 and eating disorders have been broken. Um, Jesus has done so many different things. It's, it's, just, it's just been stunning. I, I keep track of these in, in my journals, and I write these things down. And, and the reason I write them down is because Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And so when God does something, when Jesus does, does something, he's acting in perfect alignment with who he is. It's not a one-off. He's not like, well, ordinarily, I'd squash you like a bug. But since you sucked up to me, I'll do this really neat thing for you. It's like he wants to reach into our lives. He wants to change us. He wants to use us. So whenever you hear a story like this, what I want you to do is instead of going, well, that's cool, go, I'll take some of that. Right? Go, hey, I, I, that's the same God I serve. That's my Jesus. And you take, you take ownership. That's your story too because we're family. Right? This happened in your family. These are your stories. You get to tell them too. Now we also know, <laughs> I know that this is a weather morning, but we also know that this last year, maybe year and a half of Manifest, has not been easy. And, and one of the reasons it hasn't been easy, one of the reasons is that we are in a war. We are in a war, and, and the enemy of our souls, the devil, does not want more people to come to Christ. He does not want to see lives change. He does not want to see addictions broken. 
And so we've been, we've been in a battle. And, and so we've experienced some stagnation. We've experienced some people leaving. And not all the leaving's bad. It's just, it's just been, it's been hard. And, and as leadership, we've been wrestling through this and we're going, what's going on? You, some of such amazing stuff is happening. And God's been like, it's still happening. You just, you just got to look. I, I'm pruning you, like, like pruning back a tree in spring so that it can bear more fruit, right? Cutting away some of the branches that maybe weren't bearing fruit so that it can be stronger. And this is what God's doing. So what I want to do today is I want to talk a little bit about coming back to the heart of our mission. Um, I had an interesting conversation with someone who uh, in, the, in the last year or so has, has left and said, you know, you, you, seem to be, you seem to be really like focused on people that are like broken and, and hurting. And I'm like, yeah, right? Like this, this is how I'm wired. And this is, this is the mission. And uh, one of the things I say over and over again is that if you don't give yourself to a mission bigger than yourself, the mission will become yourself. Another thing that I love to say, because it messes with church people, is, is that we are here for people that aren't here yet. And then the little church voice inside of you goes, but what about me, right? And that's why I love to do it, because it messes with us, because it forces us to deal with our stuff and our own selfishness. What would it be like to give yourself to a mission bigger than yourself? What would it be like to let this this whole thing eclipse you? What would it be like to sacrifice and give and watch God work? So so you want to ask the question, what's in it for me? Let's go there. Let's go there. What would it be like for Carla? What's in it for Carla being part of that story, knowing a girl was just saved by Jesus because because she was faithful enough to give up her Sunday morning to sit with her and answer some questions? What's in, it for, what's in it for us having to, you know, walk this path with Jez and see this, this amazing story of redemption? What's in it for us? Well, we, we get to see Jesus doing what only Jesus can do. We get to see Jesus changing hearts and changing minds. We, we get to remind ourselves that life is bigger than us. We get to actually experience the, the joy of God in us and the joy and the peace of the Holy Spirit. We get to see God move instead of just me accumulate. What's in it for you? Everything. Everything. Just not the way the world gives it. So I want to just, in the little time I have left, I want to walk you through something. Thousands of years ago, God came to a man named Abraham. And back then his name was Abram. He got a name change because God gave him an upgrade. But this is what the Lord said to Abram. He said, leave your country, your people, your father's household, and go to the land I will show you. And he, and he promises Abraham this promise that is still reverberating through the cosmos and through the world, through society today. He says, I will make you into a great nation. I will bless you. I will make your name great, and you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you. I will curse whoever curses you. I will curse, and all the people on earth will be blessed through you. I don't know about you, but that sounds like a good morning time with God. You know, you, you, you open your, your mouth to pray, and God shows up and gives you this promise. Your family is going to change the whole world. The problem is that Abraham didn't have a family. Abraham was already getting old, and they didn't have any kids. And so he's wondering, wow, that's cool. I'm going to have kids, right? But then years go by, and still no kids. And decades go by, and still no kids. Like multiple decades go by, and still no kids. And Abraham starts to rethink the promise. He starts to go, well, maybe God wanted me to make it happen. And God's like, no, I did not want you to make it happen. But time is ticking, right? Like his biological clock is ticking. And, and Sarai, his wife, isn't exactly young either. So they're getting old. They are, they are raisining through their life. And, and they're going, I don't understand how this is supposed to happen. So what ends up happening is that God comes to Abraham and says, look, I have something for you that, that you're not going to be able to produce. I know that lots of time has gone by. I know that it looks like a setback. I know it looks like pruning. It looks like loss. It looks like things have plateaued. It looks like the the, the promise is not going to be fulfilled. 
But then the word of the Lord came to Abraham in a vision. Do not be afraid, Abram. I am your shield, your very great reward. And so Abraham says, okay, so, so I think maybe God, I have a solution. So I'm getting old, maybe through my servant, this could work. And God says, no, that's not how it's going to work. I'm going to give Sarah a son, and that's going to be the beginning of a nation. He's like, okay, okay, but, 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 and God says, here, let me show you something. And God comes to Abraham. He says, let's go outside. They're in a tent, right? And they walk outside into the, the, the Negev, the Sinai Desert, with this expanse of stars like you and I have never seen. Because we live in city lights. And even now, if you went somewhere remote, the atmosphere is still polluted by light. We have no idea how many stars you saw. Incredible, right? Depths of, of galaxies and stars and constellations. And God says to him, look up. Look at the stars, Abraham. Try to count them. Abraham's like, wow, count them. Okay. <laughs> like, if you can, right? He can't count them. He says, so shall your descendants be. It says that Abraham believed God. And God credited that belief to him as righteousness. You know, years ago, by now, I was lying on my back patio because God had said, go outside, lie on the patio. <laughs> so I was like, okay, I'm going outside. So I lay back down on the patio and I was looking up at the stars. And he showed me something that I want to show you. Abraham was promised that his descendants would be like these stars. So I was looking at the stars, the same stars, many of them that Abraham looked at. And I realized that I'm one of Abraham's stars. I'm one of the people that would come to believe. See, in the New Testament, there are amazing, amazing promises like this one in Galatians written by Paul. It says, you're all sons of God through faith in Jesus Christ. For all of you who are baptized into Christ have clothed yourself with Christ. There's neither Jew nor Greek, slave nor free. In other words, just because I'm not Jewish like Abraham was, it doesn't matter. Why? Um, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. If you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. So you and I sitting here today, if you belong to Jesus, you are part of the answer to Abraham's question. You are the answer to that promise. You are part of prophecy fulfilled. I realized lying there, I am one of Abraham's stars. But then I also realized, then those stars are also my inheritance. We are heirs according to the promise. So as the people of God, we jump into that prophecy and we look up at the stars and go, that's how many people are going to come to Jesus. He wants us to do what Abraham did, not reason with it, not go, well, technically there are billions and trillions and stop. Abraham just believed God and it was credited to him as righteousness. And I believe God's call for us today is to believe him on this, to take our place. It says in Philippians, it says that we're supposed to do everything without grumbling or complaining, that you may become blameless and pure, children of God without fault in a crooked and depraved generation in which you shine like stars in the universe as you hold out the word of life. We simultaneously are living as as proof positive that the promise is being fulfilled because we're one of those stars, but then as one of those stars, we're ha holding out the word of life, inviting more and more people to give their lives to Jesus. Isn't this cool? Come on, people, help me. Yes. <laughs> this is your inheritance. You are part of a rich tapestry. You are part of a, a tidal wave that's been building throughout all of history that is cresting now, and I don't know how long it's going to be. We know it's the end times. We just don't know how end, end, the end is. But we know that things are building towards a conclusion and that you are part of this, that God has handed you the baton. He has made you a star in the sky. He wants you to shine. He wants you to hold out the word of life to a, a generation that is perishing in the dark.